Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, welcome to YouTube. My name is Seam Raptor, and today we're going to be bringing you a first look at Tier 10 Premium German Aircraft Carrier, Max Immelmann. Now, Immelmann is currently in testing. What that means is I can show you the ship in port, we can talk about it, we can theorycraft all day, I can't show you gameplay. That's just the way it goes. Um, one of the more interesting things about this ship, this is now the sixth a uh, tier 10 premium aircraft carrier uh, slated to come to World of Warships. Only the second premium, and uh, well, we all know how well that first tier 10 premium aircraft carrier has worked out for everybody not playing the aircraft carrier, don't we? Yeah. So, um, it's hard to get excited about this ship right now, given the state that uh, FDR is in. Um, yeah, we'll just leave it at that. Anyways, let's have a look around and see what we can see. Now, here we are, of course... Max Immelmann is essentially a, uh, much like uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, the first uh, premium tier 10 carrier over in the American tree, is kind of a, a copy-paste of the hull of the tier 10 ship in the, in the tree at deck tree, USS Midway. Very much here the same thing is happening with Immelmann and uh, Manfred von Richthofen over in the tech tree. So basically, if you know Richthofen's hull, hit points, all that sort of thing, you know what you are in for here, okay? We'll start off with hit points, 65,000 and a half, 65 and a half thousand there, 22% torpedo protection, matches uh, Richthofen identically, identically, same numbers. You get into the armor layout, I'll save you the trouble, guys, it's the same armor, okay? Um... I did some digging. I could not detect any meaningful differences. If they are here, they are so minor that it will not make a notable difference in how the ship plays. Let's just leave it at that, okay? I can't find anything. So, yeah, if you if you own a Richtofen in port, um, or if you want to go look at one in an armor viewer or something, and you want to know more about this ship's armor, um, yeah, just have a look at, at a Richtofen in your port in-game. No big deal. There's nothing exciting to write about there. Maneuverability, I mean, it's an aircraft carrier, guys. Maneuverability is not what this thing does well. 32 knots, 1,200 meter turning circle, 16.4 uh, second rudder shift. Again, all identical to the values that you find over on uh, Richtofen's. You know, you know, built on a the hull of an H-class battleship, basically, this ship is not going to hide from anybody, and it's not going to be uh, that maneuverable. Speaking of hiding, you see here her base detection. This is with her permanent camo. Comes in at 13.6 on the surface. Um, her Without the camo, it's the same detection numbers. It's 14 even on the surface and 14.2 by air. Same as Richtofen. You're going to hear me say that a lot for most of these characteristics. Okay, um, I'll touch on it while we're here because, again, it's just like before. right? Second verse, same as the first. We have uh, six of these dual, uh, dual barrel, dual purpose... Uh, 105s, 105 millimeter mounts along each side of the ship. These count as both her long range um, anti aircraft aura and they count as her secondaries, her surface secondaries. She's got six down each side. You see them there. There's little three forward and aft of the superstructure on each side of the ship. So, again, no change there. Where are the differences? Well, um, the two main places you're going to find differences, and I'm going to touch on the easy one first. The first is in her anti-aircraft armament. This is the one that makes the least amount of impact, okay? Because most of the time, you generally don't see an aircraft carrier coming under aerial assault. It happens, but it's not that common. Um, flak and the outer bubble is the same as Rick, uh, Richtofen 9 puffs, 5.2 kilometers there. Um, interestingly, um, uh, Immelman here does have a little more AA in her, or actually, is it a little less or a little more? Hang on, i got to go back on my spreadsheet again. It is a a little more. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. It's a little more uh, AA in her outer bubble, but we're talking about less than 10 points. So it's not, you will not notice this, okay? What you do, what you actually might notice is the rest of it. Um, Richtofen's middle aura starts at the four kilometer mark. You see here, Immelmann's does not start until the three kilometer mark, and Immelmann's is simply weaker. Her AA is based large, her mid-range is based largely on these 35, 30 millimeter quad mounts, whereas uh, Richtofen, I believe, comes in with a lot of the, the 57 millimeter mounts like you find on Hindenburg and so on and so forth. So that's one notable difference here. Immelmann's AA is actually worse. Is it significantly worse? I'd say no. Um, if you're an aircraft carrier and you're attacking this guy, you, you might notice the difference. If you put the two German carriers side by side and you attacked one, you know, you ran some tests in a training room, yeah, you, you could probably quantitatively tell the difference. But in the in, a, in, a, in the, the you know vagaries of a game and you're you're trying to drop on the guy, you're not really going to notice the difference. I mean, yeah, 
probably not. Anyway, all right. What's the other place that's different? Well, it's all on the deck. It's all in the aircraft armament. So let's let's kind of dig under the hood and see if we can figure out what the hell's going on. For starters, much like Tier 8 Premium British Care Indomitable, Immelman only has two types of aircraft available to her. Traditional German torpedo bombers. These are Focke-Wulf 190s uh, with the single, single German torpedoes. She keeps 24 of these planes on her deck. That's a pretty healthy reserve. When she launches the squadron, she puts 12 in the air. Four of those planes constitute a single attack run. So, like Kaga, uh, down in the, over in the Japanese premium Kaga, she puts up 12 torpedo bombers in a flight, and when you push the button to attack, four of them come down to the deck to put torpedoes in the water. Now, unfortunately for... Immelmann here, these torpedoes are not, do not impact quite as heavily as Kaga's do. These are 35 knot torpedoes with a 6 kilometer range, and you see there an alpha of about 5,300 damage. Collectively, these squadrons, this torpedo, one torpedo assault here, will do less damage than a Midway or far less damage than an FDR's torpedo run. But it does come out ahead of the torpedoes you get on uh, some of the other, uh, the other available Tier 10 aircraft carriers in terms of if they all land the potential alpha damage there. Always remember, of course, if you've played an aircraft carrier, you know you're slamming torpedoes very commonly into the torpedo belt of a battleship, let's say. And um, yeah, you're not going to get this full alpha damage. So um, These torpedoes with this speed and this range are very clearly made to deal with capital ships, right? Like there's just, there's just no other way to cut this. A 35-knot torpedo is not going to really threaten a typical destroyer, let's say. I mean... Yeah, I just don't see it. The, the the German tech tree carriers have those those very, very quick kind of lighter hitting torpedoes that are much more likely to hit agile, faster moving destroyers. Immelmann does not suffer this, okay? Um, and then um, the plane health, 1640, pretty low. Plane speed, 154 knots, not the best, right? Not the best. Uh, I'm trying to think here, what, we, what would you compare this to? 154 knots is, for these, is about the same as... Let's see. Let's look over the list here. Um, well, it's not great. Um, I'm looking. I'm looking. Yeah, it's a little faster than Hakuryu. It's definitely slower than Richtofen's planes over in the tech tree. Like, that's for big sure. Um, so they're the second fastest, I guess, at the tier. But they're going to feel, in terms of overall speed, how they're crossing over the map, yeah, it's going to feel about like the Japanese, I suppose. Um, so there's nothing really exciting here uh, to talk about other than the fact that these are big squadrons. She has enough on the deck to, to start to throw two in the air right at the start of a match. Um, the aircraft restoration time you see there, 68 seconds, that's that's actually pretty good. That's actually really good for this for this tier and for this plane type. In fact, that is good for best in tier. Um, in general, Immelman regenerates her planes at a much faster rate than most other tier 10 aircraft carriers. The other thing you're going to find on her deck are these babies. These are the Skip Bombers. These are currently in testing. Wargaming's been derping around with these for a while. They've tested these with AP bombs. And now here on Immelman, if you look very closely, you'll note these are being done, tested now with HE bombs. These are the same 1,000 kilogram bombs that you find deployed aboard Tier 6 premium German aircraft carrier. Um, what's the name of that guy? Eric Lohenhardt. Um, but here's the, the trick here is that these are now skip bombs. What the hell is a skip bomb? We haven't talked about this, but basically, um, if you really kind of want, if you're not sure what you're after here, essentially, um, in, I, I, I don't know that any of the, the actual naval aviation uh, services messed with this in the war. However, the British... Uh, the Royal Air Force definitely did. If you want to learn a little history lesson, go look up a movie called The Dam Busters. And essentially, what the, the Royal Air Force trained themselves to do was learn to get low and drop a round a projectile, a spherical projectile, bounce it across the surface of a lake in effort to try and drop a bomb into a dam to breach a German dam, okay? And while I think the physics are different because these bombs don't look any like these bombs aren't spherical i'm not sure how these are going to skip right but the idea is the same right these bombs will come in uh, low to the water you drop the bomb and then it is meant to sk literally skip across the surface of the ocean several times uh, in order to impact the side of a vessel for an he bomb i don't see the point in this <laughs> i mean let's think about this for a minute uh, unless now I, okay now here's i have to make a couple of caveats here i have not played these Bombs, I have no idea how the mechanics work. I only understand the underlying physics behind it. In other words, I understand how they're meant to work. How do they work in World of Warships? Do they actually function this way? 
These are questions I cannot answer. I have not played them. And even if I had played them, I wouldn't be allowed to talk about it. So I can't tell you. But I will say that the idea of coming alongside of, uh, of a ship um, and throwing what amounts to a massive high explosive shell right at the side of it, depending on the ship, doesn't excite me a whole lot, right? Like if I can actually land this against a destroyer, okay, that's, hey, that's kind of useful, right? Destroyers generally have less than 68 millimeters of armor. I'll pen him. This will do big damage, just like you see with Lohenhardt's bombs down at Tier 6, right? When you can take one of Lohenhardt's massive bombs and drop it through the smokestack of a Farragut or something like that, that guy knows he's been hit, right? He takes three or 4,000 damage from that bomb. That hurts a mid-tier destroyer. Um, you know, a full pen off of this is going to be, you know, 12, 12,000 damage or whatever. It's going to be about 4,000 and change. It's a 33% modifier. But the trick is you've got to find a place for the bomb to impact that you're going to get full pen damage. And that's where I scratch my head and go, how does this work exactly, All right? Dropping these against... Um, the belt armor of a battleship, for example, is a waste of time, right? That, those guys have armor armor belts measured in hundreds of millimeters, not 68. If you can get these to bounce into the casemate armor, right? The, the, the armor above the actual belt armor at the waterline of a battleship. If you can get them, or even get them up into the superstructure, you'll get some good damage. you probably get some fires. Um, but again, I'm kind of, uh, I question, I question this, right? I just, I just don't understand kind of the point of dropping an HE bomb from the side of a ship. Um, I don't know. Without playing the ship, it's almost impossible to really understand kind of where they're going here. Um, that's it. I mean, that's, 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 that's it. That's, that's the whole ship. I mean, you get torpedoes and you get the HE skip bombs. And right now, that's it. Now, I have to make a couple of caveats here. Guys, understand... This ship is still in testing. It will likely change, okay? Wargaming has, uh, more than more than almost anything, when it comes to these carrier iterations, they do some bizarro things. So do not be surprised if you watch this video in three months' time and this ship doesn't look like this anymore, okay? It would not shock me for them to completely rethink some of this because I look at these two uh, aircraft loadouts and I just have, literally, I have no idea what's going on. Um, the other thing is to remember, I think, is, is that, um, you know, I, I kind of alluded to FDR earlier in the video, right? And I think if you've played a battleship against an FDR, um, you understand me when I say that ship needs to be tuned down. Okay, it's pretty ridiculous. And the possibility exists that they're taking a much more measured, slow, tempered approach, let's say, with another Tier 10 premium carrier in the sense that Maybe there's a subtle acknowledgement here that FDR is kind of ridiculous and that they don't they don't want to go too overboard too quickly here with Immelman. I, I'm not sure, honestly. But this this aircraft loadout, this armament just feels really, really, really weak. Um, I want to look at something real quick. I want to come over and look at consumables to see what had a heal. If if anything, we see here the skip bombers do not have a heal, and the torpedo bombers do. So that that tells us something. Of course, you do get the fighter squadrons, which is, you know, typical. So, yeah, nothing unusual in the consumables department. I wanted to come over and have a quick, quick peek and just make sure. But, yeah, guys, that's um, that's that's maximal, and there's there's not a lot, not much else to say. I won't pretend I'm excited for this ship, um, but I also won't pretend that I really understand her purpose right now. Like, you look at the aircraft loadout, and you think, okay, it's, it's this ship is meant to pick on capital ships. The torpedo armament says this ship is meant to pick on capital ships. But then you look at the bomb armament and you're like, what the hell is going on here? She doesn't have attack planes, so she's useless. She's largely toothless against destroyers. Again, I have no problem with this, but it it's a head scratcher to me. It's a real head scratcher to me, kind of where they're going with this design, at least as it stands right now. Anyway, guys, there you go. There's our first look for what it's worth. You guys wash your hands, be safe, and I'll catch you next time.